Tuesday, September 5th. Mom and I had just returned home from the supermarket. We were unloading her station wagon, carrying bags of groceries from the garage into the kitchen, when Eric and Arthur pulled up in the Land Cruiser. There was mud splattered all over the sides, all over the tinted windows, and even up on the center spotlight. Eric got out of the passenger side and walked up to Mom, slowly and solemnly. Arthur got out and followed him. Eric stopped just inside the garage and said, My Costello is dead, Mom. He got killed at practice today. Mom and I stopped still, the supermarket bags weighing down our arms. Neither of us moved or knew what to do next. We stared at him, speechless, until he continued in that same voice. He was just standing there in the end zone. He had one hand on the goalpost, leaning on it, and kaboom, there was a crack and a flash, and he went flying through the air. He landed right on his back, right there on the gold line. By now, Mom was staring hard at him, trying to understand the point of this speech. Eric, the boy, the boy who was here, Mike, is dead? Dead before he hit the ground. Arthur and I went over and looked at him, right? Arthur spoke up, right. The whole left side of his hair was burned off, singed right off, you know? Mom still did not seem to comprehend. She struggled for words. What, what, Eric, tell me what exactly, tell me exactly what you did. Me, nothing, there was nothing I could do. Coach Warner, all the other coaches, they surrounded him. They started banging on his chest, Arthur added, banging on him. Doing CPR, everybody was going nuts. Dad started running up to his car phone, dialing 911. Mom said, your father, your father called 911. Yeah, ambulances came, car cops came. They had this power pack thing, you know. Arthur said, jump starting them. They were trying to jump start his heart. They were sticking needles in him, everything, but nothing worked because he was already dead. He was dead before he hit the ground. What about Jack? Jack Costello? Was he there watching all of this? No, I didn't see him. I think his brother was there. Eric looked over at Arthur. Was that his brother? Eric said, yeah, and seemed to fight back a smile. Eric continued. His little brother freaked out. He went crazy. He kept trying to take off Mike's shoes. I thought the coach was going to have to smack him. He wouldn't get out of the way, just kept trying to take get his shoes off. Did you see that? Eric looked at Arthur again, who covered up his face with his hand. Mom picked up the phone. She tried to reach Dad, first at his mobile number, then through his office beeper, but she couldn't. I asked her, should I call Joey? No, no, we can't call the Costellos now. We can't intrude on them now. Mom banged out another number on the phone. I'm going to try the school. There was no, no answer at the school either. Mom stood there, staring at the bags of groceries. She looked like she was going to pass out. The ring of the telephone made her jump. It was dad calling from the hospital. He told her basically the same story that Eric had, right down to Joey Costello and the problem with Mike's shoes. Joey and his parents were at the hospital and Mike had been officially pronounced dead. Dad said that everyone there was in a state of shock. I know I was. I carried my bags of groceries on into the kitchen and set them down. Then I heard a strange sound. It was the sound of voices in the backyard, happy voices. I looked through the patio doors and saw Eric and Arthur. They were laughing. I stepped closer to the doors and I could hear Eric saying, did you see his hair? Did you see the side of his head? He got mohawked, man. Arthur said, mohawked. I watched them in disbelief. How could they be happy? Who were these two people? Then I realized it. They were the two people who will benefit from Mike Costello's death, and they were celebrating it. Eric grabbed at Arthur's shoes and screamed in a high-pitched voice, the shoes, give me the shoes. I turned to look for mom. She was still in the garage on the phone with dad. She saw none of this. She heard none of this. I turned back to watch the cruel comedy routine on the other side of the glass. There they were, Eric and a nasty friend, just like I remembered them in Houston. Nothing had changed except the name of the friend. I felt sick and confused. I asked myself, how could this happen? How could this happen to Mike Costello? He was a nice guy. He was number two on the death chart. He was already accepted into the School of Engineering at FSU. And I answered myself, here's how. Because Mike Costello didn't fit into the Eric Fisher football dream. Mike would never could never have been sitting out there with Eric and laughing at such a thing. Now Mike is dead, but the dream lives on.